Hello everybody, it is Tuesday, which means it is time for Tuesday Talks. And actually this week is gonna be really, really exciting. Uh, Angela Gilliard is back. So I know I've interviewed her before. She's been on quite a few times, but she and I are flipping the script this week. So she is actually gonna interview me, which is gonna be super fun. So I'm gonna bring her on here in just a little bit and then we can go ahead and join us live or on the replay, feel free to like shout us out. Let us know that you're here. We love to hear from you. And again, if you have any questions about the things that we talk about, feel free to let us know in the comments. Hey, Angela. Hi. How I'm are so you? excited. Yay, me too. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the hot seat, like, like I have to be really good or something. <laughs> Hang on, let me just adjust something really quick. Yeah, totally fine. Um, I, no, I just had this thought last week. Whoop, sorry. Again. When <clears throat> I was talking, I was like, oh my God, these people don't want to hear what I have to say. I'm sure they want to hear what you have to say. And I want to hear what you have to say. <clears throat> so... I was like, we need to do a Tuesday takeover and let me just hijack your whole series. <laughs> I can't <Here> go. <laughs> oh my God. My eye is like running like crazy. Sorry. No, you're okay. All right. So I guess first, like I know, I mean, you don't really need to introduce yourself. Obviously your audience knows who you are. I hope. <laughs> um, <laughs> But really, what I don't think we hear a lot of from you is your your initial, like, how were you introduced to RNF? Yeah, so it's actually really quite interesting because it wasn't an opportunity that I was looking for whatsoever. It was something that just kind of came upon me. And when it did, I immediately was like, uh, this is gold. I'm not going to let this pass me up. So I was in my final semester of grad school um, here in Florida, at Florida State University. And if anybody has gone to grad school, they know like your final semester is the craziest semester of your entire life. Mm -hmm. So in that semester, I was running a marketing office full time. I was also taking classes and I was um, starting to look for jobs doing my resume, my cover letter, uh, applying for jobs. And I saw a social media post about one of the incentive trips that we have. When you become a certain leader, you get to go to this trip. And I just liked it. And I was like, congrats, like great accomplishment. That's awesome. You know, something super simple. And she reached out to me and said, uh, do you want to hear about why I'm here? And I was like, yeah, because I originally thought that she had gotten that trip because she also was a colleague of mine at FSU. So I thought it was because of FSU was taking her to Cancun, Mexico. And I was like, oh, congrats. Like, this, this is kind of weird, but like, go, good for you. Like, that's awesome. Like, right. I didn't know a college or a university would send people to Cancun, Mexico, but that's what I thought. Yeah. And she immediately introduced me to the products and I fell in love because I am not a skincare person. I <laughs> thought I was a skincare person, and I'm not. I was very well, like, woken out of that, like, trance of what I thought was good skincare uh -huh. um, when I used these products. And I immediately felt the difference on my skin. And I was yeah. like, holy shit. Like, what the fuck have I been using? <laughs> Sorry, I'm swearing because that's exactly what I felt. Like, if your I platform, swear away. <laughs> I literally was also, like, I don't think you'd have me as a host if swearing wasn't allowed. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I immediately was like, I'm going to buy these products. I know it. And she was like, do you want to hear more about what I do? And I said, yeah, of course. Like, why not? I didn't think about it as a business opportunity for me. Like I said, I was applying for jobs in the career path that I was supposed yeah. to be going in, according to like going to school and following my life. So I immediately was invited to a Facebook group platform where 
a bunch of the consultants got together and they were talking about their favorite products and their favorite parts of the business and they were collaborating together. There was a big community of them getting together and it was just so energetic that I was like buzzing. I was like, holy shit, like this girl's from Idaho. This person's from Tennessee. This person's in Florida. This person's in Australia. What? Like all of these people are getting together to do this? Like that's crazy. And I immediately thought that is what I want to be a part of. I want to be part of something like this where people are supporting each other and their journeys no matter where they are and no matter what path of their journey they're on, like what part. So yeah. I immediately thought I'm just going to jump in. So I did. And I jumped in two days before my comprehensive exams were coming, which basically is writing three research papers. And then I had, I had two weeks to write them and then I had to defend them and either you pass or you fail, basically. Uh -oh. yeah. I passed, thank God. But in the <laughs> first week of writing, I also launched my business with an in-person event. And I got my first customers. And then shortly after that, I got my first business partner to sign on. So. Mm. I was kind of lucky in the fact that it came to me in a way, like I wasn't looking for something, but it was just something that I was like, I think this is a really good opportunity and I'm just going to do it. I don't care how busy I am. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> Why yeah. not? Why so not? That's how I got started. Awesome. Um, and I think you kind of actually already answered my second question, which was going to be like, no, 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 it's totally fine. But I love that you threw that in, which was like, what made you look at um, like this as a business rather than just becoming a customer. So you did touch on that. So one of the things that I love most about you, and I don't, I feel like a lot of people have this same like mentality block sometimes. So a lot of people consider network marketing like, oh, it's just for stay at home moms. It's that thing that all these moms do when their kids are running around and you know, whatever. So <clears throat> you have said and you've been very transparent at least with me that not being a mom or not intending to maybe be a mom how do you find your success navigating through that struggle to relate yeah so it's kind of hard it's like this industry has so many stigmas around it and a lot of them are really really false yeah. and if you just look inside of it or get a picture of the business plan you'll realize it's not a pyramid scheme you'll realize that everyone <laughs> in here is not a stay-at-home mom we have men consultants we have men that are top earners in our company but also just in network marketing in general you'll see like a lot of top earners that are men it's not just for stay-at-home moms and so i think part of what didn't deter me is that I didn't know those things when I first yeah. joined and I just was like, mm, why not? I'm going to do this for me. Yeah. And I think that we have to, we like a lot of times we lose sight of that. Right. And we lose sight of the fact that like, <clears throat> who cares who's involved, right? Like it doesn't really matter because what matters is what you want to do and who you are. And so yeah. what Angela was talking about just before is I've been sharing a lot on social media and of course, with my very close friends and family about the struggles that I have been going through health wise. And so this business opportunity was there for me when I didn't know that I needed it. And so that is what I truly have been focusing on is sharing my journey with chronic illness and chronic pain and that it, I look fine, right? Like I look normal and nobody can tell. And so that's why I think it's very important for us to use our voices to really vocalize what's going on because you wouldn't think someone who has chronic pain could do a business or you wouldn't think someone who has chronic pain would be maybe interested in something like this. But to be honest, doing a full nine to five, 40 hours a week, maybe 50, 60, depending on the type of job that you might have, is not possible for me. It right. might've been possible for me when I first joined this business opportunity, but it's not anymore. Yeah. And so I actually was injured on the job when I um, took my full-time career path in theater. And I think that kind of snowballed more of the things that have been happening with me. I think I've actually always had a chronic illness, but I've ignored it. And I think when life happens, you really get a dose of clarity. 
And that's what it was for me. For sure. and, and I basically was like, shit, what am I going to do now? Like, truly, what am I going to do? And in the back of my mind, I had this business that was like, I'm here. I'm here. It's like the little pop-up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm only laughing because you're answering my next question. (laughs) By the way, I'm not laughing that you have chronic illness. I'm like, she's just going to keep on going. Okay. Like she's just, it's funny because like, and this is the stuff that I like wanted to know so bad. And I want your audience to like really understand that perspective from you. And so it's funny that like everything you have to say is, is what I basically wanted to hear. So Sorry. So okay. no, no, you're fine. Ask me your next question. <laughs> well, so the part of that that I was going to ask was, you know, me being a closer friend, I know like what you've been going through. So I was just going to ask like what this business has meant to you the last few years, um, not only through, you know, your health struggles, but through the pandemic as well and what your career was um, yeah. or your career path, you know, through that as well. Um, but you've kind of already touched on that unless there's anything you want to add. Yeah. Well, I can add a few things because, um, so my career path, of course I said was in theater Mm -hmm. and I had a really hard time separating myself from that. That has been my identity since I was 11 years old, like literally 11 years old as a performer. I did both, um, like in school, but also professional performance. Um, collegiate level, regional level, and then I worked professionally throughout the country as well. So it has been like what I've dedicated my life to. I thought there was nothing else for me ever. And when I had that like pop-up moment that we were talking about, like, use me, I'm here, I'm here. I was like, I wonder if I can do this. (laughs) Like really do it. Like not just as like a part-time thing, not just as like, okay, I have a paycheck coming every month, like something that I can really dive into and really get like a new identity. Because to be honest with you, when I got injured, I felt really lost. And I felt like I didn't know who I was anymore. I was really resentful of the fact that like I was injured and I've dedicated my life to doing this thing. And other people who just picked it up a few years ago, are fine and working and full time. And I was pissed. (laughs) So um, I had to work through a lot of that. And actually this business opportunity is what helped me do that. And a lot of people say that network marketing is personal development with a paycheck. Yeah. And a lot of people don't realize what that means, but to break it down. Or how true it is. Like, yeah. it's not just the cliche thing that people say or hear, but like, because I remember the first time I heard that when I was signing up and I was like, oh, whatever, personal development. <laughs> At that point, yeah. I was like, I just want a paycheck. But like, right. I really was unaware. I mean, I've grown leaps and bounds in my last five years that I probably wouldn't have done otherwise. I mean, even from just meeting you when I first met you, which was in 2017, you have grown exponentially. Like it's incredible, the growth. And so I think what happens in a business like this is that you really latch on to people who are like-minded, but you also look up to those that you want to be like. So there's this saying that like the people that the five closest people to you that you surround yourself with are who you are and like basically like what your personality is like or what your business strategies are like all of those things like that's who you embody so when you start looking up to other people and it's not just monetarily that you're looking up to them you're looking up to them because of their kindness or because of the legacy that they're building or because of just literally the stuff that they're doing that you're like i really want to be doing that stuff but i don't know how yeah you start to surround yourself with those people and what happens is you get lifted up and it's incredible and so like personal development doesn't mean like i read a book every day and i've learned things and i'm gonna apply it but like that's also part of it like you can read you can listen to podcasts there's so much on youtube there's so many coaches and mentors out there you can align with anyone and that's what i think is so beautiful about this like if you were in a traditional position at a job you would have like a manual and you would have to do it their way. And this was not that I, that took a lot for me to learn actually though, to be honest. And that's what I really struggled with at first. I was like, what do I even do? Like, like, how do I do this? And it was just more so like leaning into the people that were really supporting me and supporting my growth. 
and just taking off from there. Mm -hmm. And so I think that answered your question. But yeah, like, no, it did for sure. Yeah. Um, and what I also like part of, I think you were saying as well, is part of it that I like didn't quite understand at first was everybody can work this business a different way. You know what I mean? So it's not like, like you said, like, yes, we have steps and like guidance and systems that are already built. And so it's like, okay, this is what you do. This is what you do. This is what you do, but you do it in your own way. Like you do these things, the Jessalyn way I do them, how they feel, um, you know, authentic to me. Like, it's just, I love that there's that like personality flexibility to it because I don't want to be the girl that goes out and like spams my social media with, you know, all the things like, I, I prefer to like give the background of it and like the here's what it is, why you need it. And so it's nice for me that like in the sea of leadership that we have, you can kind of gravitate to the people who do it kind of like the things that feel most comfortable to you. And that I think is um, a huge opportunity. <clears throat> so my next question, because it's the buzz that keeps on buzzing. <laughs> convention month is upon us are you attending i am but i'm attending virtually mainly because of health reasons so yep. um my husband and i made this decision and it was so sad it was like heartbreaking for me because i was like i want to go i want to be there and he was like but you can literally get basically the same experience from home and then that way you can have your heat pad and be in your comfy clothes and have whatever you need. And then you don't have to worry about a hotel and the beds and all, you know, all this kind of stuff yeah. and traveling takes a lot out of you. Um, <sighs> so it's like, yeah, it makes sense. But I'm yeah. like really disappointed for like a week. I was like really mopey. Yeah. Um, but but I it's really so great though that we have like the flexibility of that option. I do think so too. And I just have to remind myself that virtual convention because of the pandemic they have upped their games so oh much. my god <laughs> so it make you feel like you are there yeah. so i'm not going to be missing out i just can't physically touch people like you like i won't be able to give you a hug because you're going to be there and i won't but you know we can still share the things that we learn and everything and we can yeah. still collaborate so it's not like i'm really missing out not at all. No. Yeah. I'll FaceTime you from the arena. But last time we were there, <laughs> there was no service. Do you remember? It was like too many yeah. people in the room. Um, so what is your favorite part of convention? Like, what are you most looking forward to? I know yeah. I shared that about what I was looking forward to last week, but I'm assuming, I mean, your answer is probably different. Yeah. So my favorite thing about convention, and this is every year that corporate rolls out anything, anything is the educational piece. I am constantly a student and I love learning. And that's the one thing about convention. It's the one time of year for like basically three days straight that we get poured into and we have like this incredible uh, corporate system that's in, sh like in place that helps us learn and grow. So like I said in the beginning <clears throat> that I was not a skincare expert I have become better because of corporate, because Absolutely. corporate has rolled out so much education and poured into us that like, I feel like I know what I'm doing now. I feel yeah. like I can coach people. I feel like I can recommend mm -hmm. products based on what people say that their skin is because I know more now. And yeah. so I am like a sponge. I am so thirsty for things like that. And that was one of the things that when I first got injured and I was like, oh, what am I gonna do? And the business was there. I just dove into whatever I could learn. Yeah. As much as and I there's could. There's so much like between doc, not only the doctors, but like Dr. Tim, Nurse Mary, like the availability of the professionals that we have access to is like one of the things for me that I just love the most because I'm not a dermatologist, but I have one in my back pocket. And yeah, anything actually, we have a whole team of dermatologists in our back <laughs> pocket. It's not even just one; it's an entire like a lab True. of dermatolo True. dermatologists. And I think the other component is like, I wasn't a business owner. I was right. working for nonprofits. I know the nonprofit world. I know how to write contracts and grants and things like that. I don't know anything about 
this type of corporate style and like selling world. And so that has been huge with our business development team, just educating us on how simple this is and how anyone can really do it. I've learned so much about the business side of things that I never thought I would Mm -hmm. even know at all. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting because I, it's, that's a nice, uh, fresh perspective for me because I came into this already an entrepreneur with my salon business. So I've, I've been a business owner since I was 19 years old. And so I didn't really have to like stumble on how to start a business per se. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's actually really good. Like one of the things that I never thought of is, is like, how do you just code from that mindset to, yeah, there's a lot of resources available. There is an even like a tax write off. I was like, what the hell could be a tax write off? You're like, like the Shit's Creek episode. <laughs> did you watch that show? I did it. Oh my gosh. Okay, sorry. No, you, no, never mind. Now you have to tell me though. Oh my gosh. I'll have to send it to you. Um, for all the Shit's Creek fans out there, uh, David who's hysterical um there's an episode about he orders eye cream and (laughs) with like a company credit card and his dad is like what are you like what how are you doing this and he's like it's a write-off just because he bought it with his business credit card he's like anyways i'm not nearly as funny so i'll have to send you the actual clip but um to watch it however when we do buy eye cream it is it is a write-off it is (laughs) it is because that is inventory um so i guess my final question would be just kind of knowing that convention is just around the corner like why is now the time to dive in and get in on the excitement before it rolls out yeah so there's a lot of things that are really exciting about october because October is launching us into the last quarter of the year, which is usually huge, huge momentum. And so when you join in October, you're really setting yourself up for success in the next year. So we're focusing on 2023 right now and like how do we build ourselves to be going there? When you think about convention with that, a new product launch is always exciting. It's always great for business, not only for our current customer base or our current consultant base, but for those people that are potentially going to be joining us as customers or consultants. Because when you open a new category, which is what we're doing, your doors open even wider. So we have the ability to touch even greater places than where we were able to go just with the portfolio that we currently have. Mm -hmm. And I think that if I were to start again, so I started in March and I think you started in November, if I remember correctly. I was November, 2016 and you were the following March, right? Yeah, Yeah. March, 2017. Um, I think I would probably have, have actually started more around October if I had known. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, the only reason I say that is because of the amount of education that's coming out for you in this month to get you set up for success. You literally can launch your next year ahead of the curve. Yep. You're not trying to like learn things as much as you go. And so I really think it's important to think about that as a strategy, as a business owner. And plus, if you think about it too, you get your product first before everybody else. So you can share your transformations before anybody else. You also get to taste, not taste it. I always say that (laughs) skincare. I'm like, you get to taste it. I'm like, geez, that's not, we don't want you to taste it. We want you to like touch it, feel it, (laughs) smell it before anybody else because those things are really important when you're putting products on your body a lot of people want to know like what does it feel like what does it smell like oh is it perfumey or is it this you know you get to really describe those things and you get it firsthand and so i always say that with skincare about tasting it it's really bad it's just like the first thing that comes out of my mouth i don't know why but 
I always think about that. Like people want to sample things yeah. before they actually buy things. And you would be that first testimony to be able to sample it for them. So you would be that person to say like, hey, I've tried this. It works and I love it. This is what I love about it. And so that is so powerful because the people that are going to buy from you like, know, and trust you. And so if yeah. you can get in on it on the ground floor before all of us have taken it over, I think you want to run with it with us, you know? Mm -hmm. I just think it's a smart time. It's a really, really smart time to close the year strong, start the next year stronger. It's, yeah. just, it's just great. I'm yeah. so glad we do our convention in October because I know other companies do it at different times. Yeah, I agree. And a couple times we've had to do them in September and I like that a whole lot less, unfortunately, but yeah. I'm so glad it's back to October this year. Um, yeah, I think that really was all the questions that I had like ready for you. I don't yeah. know if you have anything else that you want to like throw out there. I feel like when I'm in this seat, I could just talk and talk and talk, which is very interesting because I'm usually the interviewer. So I'm sorry that I blew past some of your questions, but some of those oh, so stories good. were pretty good. So. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it all like went into each other. So it all makes sense. But um, yeah, well, I guess that's probably all I have for you then for today. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for letting Thank me you. take over your series yeah it was super fun so thank you guys so much for joining us this week it was flip the script on the tuesday talks it was super fun having angela interview me if you guys have questions for some of the things that we went over feel free to drop them in the comments we'd love to answer them and thanks for joining us for tuesday talks bye guys bye